Hey guys, today's video is going to be a little bit different. It won't quite be the step-by-step -step tutorial that I usually do, but I am going to show you the basic steps of how I recreated this video from Ziad Amosad. Here's his video. <laughs> About a week ago, I got a comment with a link to that video, and they were asking me how to do that effect. So I set out to recreate it, and this is what I came up with. Hey guys, I can actually turn part of myself invisible. Check that out, isn't that cool? Oh. Oh. These effect shots like this and the ones that Zach King do may look really simple and easy, but most of the time they're not. And they can be very complicated sometimes, but they make them look so simple. So I'm going to cover the process of what I do when I try to recreate a shot like this. And the first step is to really analyze the shot and see what all effects are going to need to be done. You really want to look it over thoroughly and get a plan together. Otherwise, you'll get halfway through it and you'll realize, oh, you missed something and you have to start all over. So let's Let's start by analyzing that original clip. I found that original clip at Zia6 underscore Y's Instagram page. Ziad made this video about four years ago and he's continued to do a lot of amazing videos over the last few years. I'll put a link to his show reel below in case you want to check it out. So as I look at the video clip, I see that there are multiple effects working together to create the illusion of being invisible. Two physical props that I'm going to need are the glasses and a shirt with a lot of detail that can be used for tracking points. His shirt has so many designs on it that there are several points that can be used to create tracking data. If I let the video play, we see the first main effects, the invisible stomach area. I'd say he either masked it out by hand or he wore a different color shirt underneath and keyed it out. The next effect that we see is that when his hand reaches behind him, you can see it through that part of him. For this part, he shot the hand separately and lined it up perfectly and then added it back in. He has a little strip of clothes that separates the real arm and the added arm so you can't see that they're not really connected. We continue the video and the next effects happen when he sneezes. Three main effects actually. First, he masked his arms and head out. Second, he added the glasses back in and tracked them to his body. At first, I thought he might have used a green screen hood and put the glasses on, but if he did that, you wouldn't be able to see both ear pieces on the glasses. So he did something different there, and I'll have to figure out how I want to do that. The third effect is a little harder to notice, but he added in the back of his shirt into the neck hole. So it looks like that you're looking through his neck and seeing the back of his shirt. After he started the invisible effect, he was careful not to let his hands or chin pass in front of his shirt. Since they're masked out, they would cause a problem. And the other thing is that when he walks out of the shot, he doesn't turn much, so you can't see inside the sleeve holes. He just remains facing the camera so that his mask will be all that he needs to make it work. So, now that I'm finished analyzing the shot, I have my plan and my shot list. One, I need to shoot my main footage, and then I need to shoot a background plate with nothing in it. And then I'll shoot my arm against a green screen and make it go behind me. And last, I'll need to figure out a way to film those glasses against a green screen so that I can add them back in also. Let's see what we can do. I start by figuring out what I want for my background and I put the camera on a tripod and lock it down. I want to make sure the camera doesn't move any after I begin shooting. Then I put a piece of tape on the floor and set the Josephine dummy on it in order to pull focus. I didn't do this right on my first attempt and everything was out of focus and I had to reshoot. Next, I make sure that there is as little of shadow as possible on the wall right behind me. That's one reason that I shot down an open hallway. Shadows will give away the illusion. After everything is set, I stand on my tape marker and I record the main footage. I do it a few times to get it right. After I feel like I got it, I step completely out of frame and make sure that I'm not casting any shadows on the wall and I record a clean background shot. This will be the footage that is seen through the invisible parts of me. After I get the background footage, I get out my pop-up green screen and I set it a little bit behind where I was standing. I want to duplicate what my hand did when it went directly behind me, so I practice it a few times to get the angle right. 
I record a few takes of just my hand. I do some long takes and some short takes so that I can have the options later when I start editing. The last bit of footage that I'm going to need is the glasses in front of the green screen. But how am I gonna make them float? If I just hold them, then my fingers will be in front of some part of them. So I came up with a different solution. I found a stick and I hot glued it to the back side of the nose piece. I decided to make the stick point upwards since the camera is slightly lower. This will ensure that the stick never passes in front of any part of the glasses. I again shot several different takes at different speeds and lengths to give myself options when I edit. This should be all of the footage that I'll need to pull off this effect. So let's get started editing. The first thing I did is open my footage in Premiere Pro, but you can do it right in After Effects if you want. I do it in Premiere Pro so I can look at my footage and then trim out a clip and then open it in After Effects. So I find the main footage take first and I trim it to the length I want and then I right click it and choose replace with After Effects composition. In After Effects, the first thing I want to do is to mask out my stomach area when I lift my shirt. I'm going to use the Rotor Brush version 2.0. The version 2 is much more accurate than the version 1, and since I wore a red shirt underneath, this is a good line for the rotor brush to find. I haven't done a tutorial on the rotor brush 2.0, but if you'd like for me to, let me know in the comments below. If you don't want to use the rotor brush at all, you can just mask it out by hand and animate the mask to follow the shirt up and down. Once it's masked out, I go back to Premiere Pro and find my clean background plate and trim it out and open it into After Effects. Then, back in After Effects, I select the clip and copy and paste it into my main comp. I move the background layer to the bottom and boom, we already have an invisible section. Now I need to find a clip of my hand, so I go back into Premiere Pro and do the same process again and bring the hand clip back into my main comp and place it at the top. I move the hand footage in the timeline so that it starts right when the hand comes into view through the invisible hole. I put a mask on the hand layer so that I only have what I need and then I pull a green screen key. I use Primac Key 6 from Red Giant, but you can use Keylight 1.2 which comes with After Effects or you can use any other keyer you want. After I get a good key, I want to adjust the anchor point so that the hand will rotate around the middle of the forearm. Next, I want to duplicate my main footage and put it at the top, and then mask out the shirt area that the added arm is hidden behind. I make sure that the mask is plenty large to cover any part of the new arm that would be outside of the body. I'm going to name some of my layers now before this all gets out of hand. Okay, now I go to the hand layer, which I've named as hand, and I move and scale it to where it looks like it's connected to the arm. I set a keyframe on the position and the rotation, and I step through the footage and adjust the hand until it looks like it's attached to the rest of my arm for the whole time that it's behind me. After that, I can see that the hand is just a little bright, so I use the curves effect to darken it down a little bit to where it matches better. After I watch this part again, I can see that it needs a little motion blur, so I turn that on for this layer. I play with the position and the rotation a little bit more, and then that's it for this first effect. Now, as I said, I'm not going through every single step in detail. This video would end up being way too long if I did that, but I am showing at least the basics of every step I did. Now I can move on to the next effect where I sneeze and turn invisible. The first part of this is to mask out both the arms and the head. I want this effect to start right as I sneeze. So I go to that point and I create a mask around each arm and my head and I keep the mask tight where it connects to the shirt. The rest of the mask can be way outside of the arm and head. I use the mask feather tool to do some feathering in the areas that are not next to the shirt, but I keep the feathering very small against the sleeve and the neckline. I go ahead and set all of these masks to subtract. Then I set a keyframe on the mask path for each of them. Then I step through the rest of the animation moving the mask so that my head and arms are erased for all of that section. When I was trying to get this effect to kick on right when I sneeze, I found a weird issue where the mask opacity of the first mask doesn't seem to be working the way it should. So to get those masks to kick on right when I sneeze, I just go to that point in the timeline and I hold Control and Shift and I hit D. This will divide the layer and I can click on the section that I want the arms and head visible and just delete the masks. Now, when I sneeze is when the masks start and I go invisible. 
There seems to be a shadow on the wall that doesn't look very good with my masking work. So I'm going to duplicate my background layer and move it to the top and create a mask over that piece of shadow. And then I'm going to animate that mask so that it will move as I walk off of the screen. I turn up the feathering just a little bit to hide the edges on that also. Before I start on adding the glasses, I'm going to go ahead and select all of my layers and pre-compose them and move all attributes. Now to add the glasses. The first thing I'm going to do is to track my shirt. I would love to track up near the neck, but I didn't put any points, so I'll just have to track the Studio 2 emblem that's on my chest for the tracking points. I'm doing this just to get something on my body to attach the glasses to. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new null and call it glasses. Then I go to the pre-comp layer and I right click it and go to track motion. I click the boxes for position, rotation, and scale. I pick two points on my shirt that are not too close together and start the tracking. Since I shot at a shutter speed of 50, I have motion blur in my shot and the motion tracker is having some trouble. So I'll manually move the tracking points for the frames that it can't track until I get it all to look pretty good. I click target and apply it to the glasses null. Now, the glasses null is attached pretty well to the shirt. So I go back to my footage in Premiere Pro and select a clip of the glasses that seems like it would be just about right and I trim it and replace it as an After Effects composition. Back in After Effects, I put a small mask around the glasses and make sure it's big enough that the glasses don't go outside of it. Then I key out the green and it isn't perfect, but it will work for this effect. I select the layer and copy it using Control C on a PC. Then I go to my composition that has the glasses null object and I paste it in. I make sure that it is at the top layer and then I move the footage in the timeline to line it up to start right when I sneeze and go invisible. I parent the video of the glasses to the glasses null and then I move them into position. I can see that there's still a shadow of my head being cast on my shirt so I can see when my head turns and I can line the glasses up to start turning at the same time. I think that shadow looks pretty cool and plus I can use it to see when my head turns. Okay guys, that was a lie. The shadow was a mistake. I didn't realize it was there and I didn't, I didn't want to have to reshoot it. I'm sorry. I trim the clip and I make sure that the glasses are not visible until they're supposed to be and I can see that the glasses and the head turn are not syncing up. So I right click the glasses video layer and I go up to time and then I select enable time remapping. I set keyframes when the glasses turn and when they turn back. Then I just line up the keyframes with the point in the video where my head moves and then moves back. I play the footage to see how well it's working and I can see that the glasses don't stay right where I want them. And they don't scale up enough when I walk towards the camera. This is an example of things not working the way you hope they would, but you know, these things happen. So I'm just gonna have to do a little bit of manual tweaking. So I set a keyframe for the scale and anchor point and I go through it and I adjust the glasses until they stay closer to where my eyes would be. I also make sure that the glasses get larger as they get closer to the camera when I walk off of the screen. Okay, I still need to erase that bar that is attached to the glasses. So I go to the glasses video layer and I create a new mask and I set it to subtract and I animate it until you can't see that bar anymore. I go ahead and add motion blur to the glasses video layer and I watch the effect a few times and make some minor adjustments just to get it all looking good. Okay, in order to properly pay homage to what Ziad did, I'm going to need to show the inside of the back of my shirt in the neck hole. You can clearly see that I have a red shirt under the top shirt, but there's a problem. I don't have that red shirt at the studio anymore. I was going to just take a picture of the back part of the red shirt, but now I can't do that. So I'm going to build what I need in Photoshop and in After Effects. I'm going to go over this very quickly just so you can know what I did. First, I found a clear frame with no blur in my After Effects composition and rendered it out as a single image. I opened it in Photoshop and used the clone stamp tool to make more of the red shirt. I saved it from Photoshop as a JPEG. In After Effects, I need to open my composition that has my masking layers, where I had erased my arms and my head and stuff. Then, I open the shirt piece layer in that comp. There, I use the mask tool to cut out the piece that I need, and then I pre-compose that layer. Next, 
I add the liquify effect. I use it to shape the shirt piece until it looks like it could be the back inside of my shirt. Now, before I can add a mask to this layer and get it to work properly, I'll need to pre-compose this layer again and move all attributes. So next I go to my main footage that has the mask around the head and I move the playhead to where the mask animation starts and I copy that mask, the one around the head. Then I paste that mask into the shirt piece layer. I need to make sure that the pasted mask animation starts on the same frame as the copied mask animation. Next, I can change the mask from subtract to add. Now I can double click and go into my shirt piece pre-comp and copy and paste in my main footage and my background footage. I set the opacity down to about 50% on the shirt piece so that I can see where to move that shirt piece in the neck hole. Now I click the stopwatch on position, scale, and rotation, and I move through the footage and I animate the shirt piece to basically stay in the right position. I also adjust the scale some when it needs to get bigger as I walk towards the camera. After I manually track it to where it stays on the neck hole, I can turn the opacity back up to 100%. Now I want to go all the way in to my deepest shirt piece pre-comp. So I keep double clicking those shirt pieces until I get all the way to the most inner one. I want to add a little bit of a curves effect and darken it down just a little bit so it's not quite the same brightness as the front of my shirt when I return to my main composition. I have to continue to work on the position and the mass a little bit to get the added shirt piece to look like it's really there. Next, I go ahead and add motion blur to that layer. Now, one more thing that I can add just to tie it all together a little bit more is a little bit of camera shake. I have some pre-made ones, so I go into Premiere Pro and I just drag and drop a camera shake in. So finally, I'm gonna just go ahead and render the whole clip and watch it. Hey guys, I can actually turn part of myself invisible. Check that out, isn't that cool? Oh. Oh. So I'm happy with these results, especially since I shot at a higher resolution, and higher resolution is a little less forgiving if you have any flaws. I ended up editing for about three hours on this effect shot, but I'm sure it would be faster if I did it for a second time. And again, I know that this wasn't as detailed of a tutorial as I sometimes do, but you can still see how I approached recreating this shot. Hopefully it will help you see how you can take a VFX shot like this and get a plan together and recreate it. Thanks for watching and keep an eye out for our next video because it's going to be better than this one.